May the grace and peace of God our Father and Lord Jesus, and may the strength and healing of the Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we come together on May 1st, this is the beginning of the month of May, according to our Blessed Mother Mary. And um, today also in this Easter season, we pause on May 1st to celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. And in 1955, Put in this feast on May 1st to counteract the communist celebration on May 1st. And where the um, worker is nothing but a slave of the state. Uh, God has made us to co-create and work with him in developing creation and the gift of human life. So let us look into our hearts now, see ourselves as God's image and how we show that image in what we do with our lives. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you are the way, the truth, the life. Christ, have mercy. And through your Spirit, Lord, A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon his name. 
But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel, and I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house, laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me, Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, things like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized. And when he had eaten, he regained his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the infidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Isn't he the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and his own home. And he did not work many miracles there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. As we celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, we look at the sanctity of work, what we've done in our careers, or what we are doing in our continuing vocation. The Second Vatican Council in its uh, document on the church in the modern world spoke of reminding us that the God, the creator, created us to take care of, to reverence, and to nurture all of creation. It says in the document, this commission extends this commission of sanctifying work extends it to the most ordinary activities of everyday life, where men and women, in the course of gaining a livelihood for themselves and their families, offer appropriate service to society. They can be confident that their personal efforts promote the work of the Creator, confer benefit on their fellow human beings, 
and help to realize God's plan in history. So far from thinking that the achievements gained by human abilities and strength are in opposition to God's power, or that the human with our intelligence is in some sense a rival to our creator, Christians are, on the contrary, convinced that the triumphs of the human race are a sign of God's greatness and the effect of his wonderful providence. The more the power of man increases, the wider is the scope of our responsibilities as individuals and as a community. It is clear then that the Christian message does not deflect we human beings from building up the world or encourage us to neglect the good of our fellow human beings, but rather places on us a stricter obligation to work for these objectives. Pope uh, uh, John Paul II said it all this simply, work was the daily expression of love in the life of the family at Nazareth. And so let our work, whether it's um, when we, we get called back to work, any of you might not be able to do your job these days because of the pandemic, or the work that we do do, whether it's mowing the lawn to beautify creation or washing the dishes and all those other things. Work was the daily expression of love in the life of the family at Nazareth. Work is the daily expression of love in the life of your family in San Antonio. Let us pray. First of all, we pray for all of God's people throughout the world as we begin this month devoted to our Blessed Mother Mary, that she, by her example of faith and love, will be the pattern for all of our lives as we try to live faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord. And on this feast of St. Joseph the Worker, that we will see the dignity of the work we do and that all will receive just wages for their work. We pray to the Lord. We pray that that family at Nazareth, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, will be the model for our own life and our homes. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who are sick and suffering from this uh, pandemic and from all the other ills that strike our human bodies, uh, that the comfort of the Lord will be with each one and that at the hour of death, it may be a happy death through the intercession of St. Joseph and our Blessed Mother. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to our gracious God. May the Lord accept the sacrifices of your hands. The praise of the Lord is the Lord. O God, font of all mercy, look upon our offering which we bring before you in commemoration of St. Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through your beloved Son, as we commemorate St. Joseph in order to give you fitting praise and to glorify you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. Through him the angels praise you. All the powers of heaven worship together in exultation May our voices join with theirs as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in Christ. Christ. Blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in Christ. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly entered into his suffering, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it and handed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He handed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo and Michael, our bishops, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not our temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sinfulness, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter my world. I am the Savior of my soul.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having fed upon your heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by the example of St. Joseph, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Just a little um, meditation here that St. Alphonsus Liguori wrote of uh, St. Joseph uh, speaking to his son. Since you chose to call me father, let me also call you son. My son, I love you. I love you, my God. Yes, I love you now and will always love you. As my God, I humbly adore you. But as my son, let me embrace you. Let my heart forever remain united to you with the bonds of love. Since you have deigned to choose me as your tutor and custodian of your life, sweet love of my life, infinite goodness, tell me what you want, what you seek from me. All that I am, I give you. All my love, I consecrate to you. Now my heart no longer belongs to me. My life is no longer mine to live. Since here on earth you were kind to choose me as your companion, then, my Lord, I dare hope that your companion I will be forever in heaven. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.